were discussing about the databases, right? The biological sequence database, which is protein. So in the last class, we discussed uh, in brief uh, an overview of what a database is and an introduction to the DNA database, right? And uh, we, we, I asked you for a few exercises. That is, uh, you know, in the NCBI, the nucleotide core database, uh, you have to find TP53. That is nothing but uh, is a tumor suppressor protein P53. Uh, the gene coding for the P53 protein is TP53 gene, right? And that, of course, the reference entry of this G, uh, this gene, the DNA sequence, is in rough seq database, not in normal gen bank database, but it is already curated, right? It has already been finalized, and this dat database is what you call the rough seq. So if you simply search this entry TP53 in the entries, then that will lead you to the reference sequence database, right? That you don't really have to memorize all these names. You simply search in entries and click on the relevant link. What do you want to look at this particular entry? Would you like to see a protein sequence of this? That is the amino acid sequence of this P53. Then you would need to click on the protein database entry. But if you want to see the uh, DNA uh, entry of this particular gene, then you would need to go to the reference sequence database entry, right? Then, of course, on the left side or top side, you can change the display settings to all of these different formats that we explained in our last class. The GenPack full format or master format, which is very simple. Then revision history, all these histories, the changes in that sequence as more and more evidence accumulates. Right? And then ASN1, which is very complex. I mean, it looks quite complex, but it's not really that tricky. It's more or less like HTML. Okay? And that kind of abstract syntax notation one, right? And uh, today we will uh, describe. We'll, we'll start describing more detail on the nucleotide sequence databases. Well, we have three primary databases of the DNA sequence. Okay, these are big primary databases. As we know, these are DNA Data Bank of Japan, which is based in the Center for Information Biology (CIB) at National Institute of Genetics, uh, NIG in Shizuoka, Japan. Okay. And then the second one is European Molecular Biology Laboratory or EMBL at the European Bioinformatics Institute at Hingston, UK. You know this EMBL is a big conglomerate and it's not just in UK. Uh, it is in uh, Frankfurt in Germany, Paris, many places around Europe, European Union, okay, including the UK. That this place, this EBI is situated in Hingston, which is near to Oxford in the UK, is uh, looking after the DNA sequence database of the EM Bill division, right? Then the Gen Bank, which is quite popular, uh, it's it's a National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, which is in fact part of NLM and NIH, right? National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, at Bethesda, Maryland, US. So these three are the main primary databases and they, they have the inter-exchangeability that if you search in D, DBJ you can still access entries which is deposited in GenBank USA or EMBL Europe. Right? You don't really have to search in all these databases separately because these are all interconnected. right? And uh, this is th th these are the search uh, you know utilities or meta search tools where you search these databases. Entrace, you use Entrace to search in GenBank. Similar way, SRS or Sequence Retrieval System, you use that to access information from the EMBL or elsewhere as well. Or Get Entry for DDBJ. Okay, so it depends upon uh, ease of use and your preferences. If you like Get Entry, you can use Get Entry to get all information from all other uh, you know databases as well or if you like entries that is itself is fine I use entries because that's again you know it all depends upon what you prefer right ease of use so this is how the entries looks like like if I search TP53 in our previous example and you click go then these numbers represent these are the num these are entries in each databases for example there are six entries in genome survey sequence of this particular gene and uh, OMIM you know I told you online Mendelian inheritance in man right there are 261 data of the inheritance pertaining to this particular gene 
Okay? And uh, all this one, you can just have a look. Okay, you can search out this kind of particular gene. Any gene it could be cytochrome C oxidase or whatever gene you would like to be BRCA1. Search out in this entries and click on the entries from each database. That will let you understand how these uh, databases function. What are the uh, information, further information that you might be interested to look for. Okay. And this is how the DDBJ uh, website looks like where you know this is uh, mountain Fuji, right? famous uh, Japanese mountain. And again this is SRS, uh, this one DDBJ, this is mainly in Japanese. Okay? And this is for the Japanese researchers and uh, I don't think that uh, someone other than Japanese will be interested to access this DDBJ database. And their English uh, interface is not really that tidy or appealing. But the Japanese, of course, that is the best one for the Japanese. Unfortunately, we don't have anything in India or, you know, anything which uh, other than these three big databases in the world. And then this SRS, I, I told you, sequence retrieval system is uh, based, uh, you know, subset of EPI or EMPL. This is how it looks like. You can, again, you can search the same thing and see. For example, here you can say find nucleotides matching TP53 and search out to see all nucleotide entry. Okay, or you can simply search here TP53. See not just the nucleotide, but also protein and other inheritance information or uh, SNP data. All those things that will come up. Now the GenBank is nothing but it's NIH sequence database of all publicly available DNA. Right? It's not just American DNA. It's all over the world, and not just the GenBank. Okay, it's also in Texas entries from EMBL, also from DDBJ right. and derived protein sequences. For example, if you come up with a protein sequence, okay, after protein sequencing you have an amino acid sequence and you can translate it to form a, uh, you know, uh, DNA sequence, what would have been the transcript sequence of that particular protein that is also included in GenBank with annotations describing the biologic information of these records contained. So annotation again, if the person who is sequencing this gene or genome, if the person is quite hard working for example or up to date then he can annotate the whole sequence right or if the person is quite lazy or lousy just need uh, to get a sequence the, and that is how most of the gen bank sequences are not annotated just gives you a stretch of DNA without any information. If it's a gene, very important thing is that open reading frame, right? Which frame should I read it? And what would be the translated protein sequence? And if it's a eukaryotic gene, uh, we should know where are the exon intron boundaries. And if you, if you don't annotate this information properly, the sequence do not have so much of the meaning, right? So the annotation is very important. And most of the good entries in gen banks are totally annotated, well annotated. Okay. So these are types of files in gen bank from one gene investigations or investigators. Uh, these, like for one gene, you're you're sequencing a gene from a particular person <coughs> having a history of a disease, for example. You're sequencing a particular gene, and often these kind of one gene investigators. Entries are well annotated, okay, and these are mostly cDNA, complementary DNA from an mRNA. With the reverse transcriptase, you are synthesizing a DNA, cDNA, to study the expression profile of a particular gene in an individual at a particular stage of a disease or a life. Okay, so a genomic segment from a newly discovered species. Again, if you discover a new species then you can simply sequence whatever the segment of the genome, especially the barcode, DNA barcode of that particular species, you, you sequence it and annotate very well. Or mitochondria or virus DNA or genome you can say, because these, these the genome of mitochondria or virus are extremely small, something like eukaryotic gene and the size of normal gene or genome of mitochondria or uh, uh, you know, virus are almost of the same. Now, population of phylogenetic analysis, for example, rRNA amplicon from environmental sampling. What is this amplicon? Nothing but PCR amplified products, right? 
RNA, rRNA, ribosomal RNA, for example, 16S rRNA for bacteria. If you are doing some uh, metagenetic study on the bacterial population in a particular soil, for example, here, or water, you normally get extract all DNA and then you uh, use primers specific to 16S rRNA. There are several primers available and amplify the 16S rRNA and then deposit in the sequence repositories right this is a snapshot of the biodiversity microbial biodiversity in a particular location right that is for 16s is mainly used for the prokaryote and 18s you can use it for plants or uh, you know animals so this rrna you can use it for that as well so mainly for the environmental sample right and from genome centers these are centers which are, uh, you know, targeted for genome sequencing. Right. Gene expression studies or genome sequencing project, for example, human genome project. So these can also be uh, uh, some of the types of files that you can access from GenTank. Right. HTG or con CON, Contig Assembly Instructions or High Throughput Genome Sequences, HTG. These are functional divisions of GenBank that we will come across later. Uh, gene expression studies, it could be express sequence tag EST or it could be full length insert cDNA. Okay, so the uh, complementary DNA, you get it from the mRNA. So RNA comes in play only if you are looking for the expression, gene expression, right? So normally you don't really need that mRNA or RNA extraction unless you really study about the expression levels or uh, you know kinds of genes which are being expressed at a particular time right so if you look at the genbank flat file a dissection of this flat file uh, we have all already presented this genbank flat file in our previous class but let's see that in a little bit more detail it consists of header feature or feature table and the database content so mostly for uh, if it's nucleotide core database it has to be a dna and the protein database, it is of course, it is an amino acid sequence. Protein sequence is nothing but amino acid sequence. And if the functional division is CON, there are several functional divisions, right? CON is nothing but contig assembly instructions. Where how do you assemble these small, small contig? If you are doing a genome sequence, you are not sequencing from chromosome, one end of chromosome to another end of chromosome, right? You are, it's next to impossible to do a complete sequence. Normally, the, the sequencers have a read length for a capillary based sequencer. The read length, uh, maximum read length possibly is around 800 to 900 base pairs. 900 is nothing, we know that, right? But for a, uh, for a chromosome, it is like 2 lakh, 3 lakh base pair. So it, it's impossible to read at one stretch. So we, we sequence at small, small stretches and then we join n by n. Okay, that is what contig assembly is. So CON is nothing but contig assembly instructions. That means from which context to assemble it. Very, very technical. It contains no DNA sequence at all. Just shows you how to assemble these contexts. Right. Now header region consists of all this kind of uh, you know definition. It's about uh, you know what this sequence is about. So if you access a particular gene sequence and look at the header, it will show you locus okay? and the base pair. Locus is nothing but an identifier or it could be a gene, what gene you are sequencing or what part of chromosome you are sequencing. But it really don't have any meaning okay? and this is not a dependable identifier if you want to caught a sequence in your paper. Now this is the length of that particular gene and then uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, what kind of, is it an mRNA? or cDNA, what kind of molecule it is. And this is organismal division, rod, R-O-D means rod and it. Okay, it's a murine or rat, mouse or rat, right? Date of submission. And definition line, accession, NID, all these things, right? Journal and uh, author, author names, author contact information, journal where you have submitted your paper. Normally you submit the paper before submitting the paper, you submit the sequence to the GenBank to get the accession number so that you can code the number in your paper, right? So that normally all the entries, it says submitted to whatever the journal, 
and once this your article gets accepted then you change this entry to accepted or published in so and so journal okay so that is how it is so you know this one the first one here is rod is basically organismal division so what kind of organism this one is so the entry is in this division so the it's a it's a subset of the database okay so they have uh, uh, divided the database based upon the organism which the sequence is from so again this sort of organismal subdivisions are not used in all the databases some database have some conventions right bct is you can see here on the third row which are the database having this sort of organismal divisions right ddbj and genbank have bct division while embl do not have it but these some of these are used by all these databases right bct is for bacteria then fungus hume human being or homo sapiens inv is an invertebrate then mammal other mammalia other means whatever we are not covering here human beings are not actually mam then org is organel organel as as in mitochondria or chloroplast these are organelles having independent genome right then phg it's a phage then pln for plant primate pri then uh, pro it's a prokaryote rodent then synthetic or chimeric for example yak and back bacterial artificial chromosome yeast artificial chromosome these are chimeric or synthetic genome right and vrl is viral vrt is other vertebrate okay these are some of the organismal divisions that we use it now identifiers what are these it should be stable through time right when you submit something a sequence then uh, something which you have to code in your paper no no that is something called identifier it's different identifier is different locus is different locus is normally something uh, that that shows what what your sequence is about for example so it could be some gene name could be part of the locus okay so the gene name or if it's an rrna which rrna it is uh, rrna for example 26s rrna it could be the locus okay. so identifier is a most important citing tool of a particular sequence so if you want to cite a particular sequence which you generated in your paper so you use identifier so even if you modify that sequence you revise re revise that sequence even after many revisions identifier remains same so that particular number a set of uh, alpha numerals and numerals that will always point to a particular entry in a database is what you call identifier okay always refer to a specific sequence and need this identifier to track history of sequence updates so that is why the identifier is normally identifier dot or accession dot version that is what the identifier is the version will change that number will change but accession number remains same also need a feature and annotation identifiers right identifier that will lead you to particular feature for example if it's a uh, you know if it if it's a intron exon intron exon and if you want to point to a particular exon in your entire gene then you can have accession dot version dot some other identifier that will take you to a particular uh, exon okay so that is what it is so locus accession nid and protein id these are main parts of your header so locus we know it's a unique string of 10 letters and numbers in the database not maintained among the database so it's it's not a good uh, thing to call it then accession is a unique identifier so that the record citable entry does not change when the record is updated so it's more or less constant okay so it's a reliable identifier ideal for citation in publication then version is a new system where the accession version play same as accession and gn version is nothing but if you update it then the version number changes while accession remains same okay then nucleotide gi protein gi protein id some of the other identifiers 
uh, not really that important okay these are internal reference tool for the gen bank okay so that will lead you to a particular thing now here you can see hsu40282 you can simply search out this also in the gen bank and this is how it looks like here the locus is this right an accession version you see that accession and version is version is nothing but accession dot version right then they have GI, protein GI, and pro protein GI and protein ID. These numbers are used for cross-linking to protein databases. Because if you click on the translated product of a particular gene, that should take you to the, the amino acid sequence of that particular gene, right? That is why this protein GI and protein IDs are for, okay? Gene equal to ILK, right? No, protein serine, threonine kinase, all those information about it. Codon start is equal to 1. That means the first position you have to start the codon. So there are the, the it could be three types, right? 1, 2, or 3. Right? The other one is the reverse strand, right? Normally the forward strand, you're writing 5 dash to 3 dash. That is a convention, the forward strand. And 3 dash to 5 dash is the other strand. Yeah. So when you write this number, so the version number change. Version number change, yes. But accession remains same. Constant. Yeah. That is what if you look at the display options and if you look at the version history, there is another display option, right? And then you will see that all the revisions that have been taken place with the accession number will be same, while uh, this one uh, version number will be different from each versions. Okay. So you know locus accession version and a GI protein GI and protein ID which I covered, right? Is that clear to you? And number format, the accession number formats. For the gen bank, it is core nucleotide plus database EST plus GSS. That is what the normal uh, you know gen bank is, right? So well, there are many inside the gen bank there are so many databases right most important these are core nucleotide that is nucleotide database then database est express sequence tag then genome survey sequences all these uh, databases have either 1 plus 5 or 2 plus 6 mostly it is 2 plus 6 these days if you submit it the the number which you get is 2 plus 6 like af to uh, you know alpha numerals then six numerals right so for wgs or whole genome sequences then uh, it is four plus two plus six this is the kind of format for wgs while for protein uh, swiss prod and uniprot it is one plus five and three plus five for gen pact all have accession dot version format is that clear you don't have to memorize this you know i just give you an idea about it that's all this is an example of a header here it is a locus you know and uh, this is the you know uh, dna and what is the size of the the chromosome it's basically a chromosome 10 right clone p10 complete sequence it, it's a primate we know pri and uh, homo sap it's it's not ho hum because in gen bank there is no such hum right uh, it's only primate human beings are nothing but primate we know it it's homo sapiens chromosome 10 clon p 10 complete sequence accession you know version accession and version you see that relationship between these two keywords it is htg high throughput genome that is htg means right source is human organism homo sapiens all this uh, you know that the hierarchy taxonomic hierarchy is presented here then reference author title journal see most of these journals are unpublished because the moment you submit the sequence uh, simultaneously you are submitting your paper that is the convention is right and people do not update it that is another problem once your paper is published or if it's rejected and published elsewhere you should have to update this entry here so that if a pe person reading about this one uh, if they want to know more about this particular uh, sequence for example <coughs> which primer the person is used to amplify it and which are the pcr reaction profiles or what are the conclusions uh, arrived by this particular study they should know what, uh, what the title and what the journal is right and if it's unpublished what is the mechanism to find out there is again there is a uh, i mean it's just logic that you use this particular accession 
AF, this is the same accession. Here, locus and accession is same, right? That is why locus is not reliable. You, you take this accession number and search in Scholar, for example, Google Scholar, which is quite powerful. So that will take you that particular accession number appearing in a journal article so that you can able to refer that particular article where the sequence is published. Clear? So feature, next is feature, header is that one, right? All about that sequence, the origin and then comes a feature. Source, it contains information about the organism, mapping, <coughs> chromosome, tissue alignment, clone identification. These information is source that, uh, you know, that particular header is giving. CDS, instructions on how to join sequences together to make an amino acid sequence. CDS is, uh, you know, that is uh, uh, DNA, coding DNA sequence. CDS. So coding means it is coding for an amino acid or a protein, right? So CDS, that part should say what is the translated product. That is the amino acid sequence of a particular gene or CDS. Uh, it also includes cross references to other databases. Other database it could be PDB database for the structure of the protein, okay? Or the protein database for the the uh, you know more about that particular protein entry gene feature a segment of DNA identified by a name so if it's a Hugo convention there is a name for a particular DNA moiety so gene gene names and if a part of uh, your genome sequence is having identified named gene so that gene feature you have to write here then RNA feature used to annotate the RNA on genomic sequence. Similar to the gene, if it's an RNA, then you will have to say what kind of RNA, if it's a tRNA, rRNA, mRNA, or number of small uh, interfering RNAs, right? That you will have to say that there. This is an example of that, uh, you know, a Homo sapiens chromosome 10 clone P10 complete sequence. P10 is nothing but phosphatase and tensin homolog. Again, that particular gene is quite, a, uh, you know, so much studied gene because of their involvement in cancer. Like TP53, this P10 is also a, you know, tumor suppressor gene. Okay. So, uh, you see the feature location slash qualifiers, right? Source, one, two, see, it's immensely big gene, right? 2,18,336, that is the length of that particular segment. So, that could be a whole chromosome. So, organism is homo sap taxon ID 9606. This is again, this is an accession number for another database called taxonomy database, NCBI taxon database. So, if you click here, it will lead you to that particular entry in that database. But homo sapiens, we all know, no problem. But if it's an unknown plant, for example, or an invertebrate, which we don't know the hierarchy, you will have to click on that particular entry to take you to that particular taxonomy database. So chromosome is 10, we know clone, P10, then source, organism, right? Fire dash, unter, uh, you know, untranslated region, right? And three dash UTR is also there. So these are something called annotations. So you're annotating five dash UTR is starting from 22308. That is a position of your sequence. One is the first position, then two, three, four, like that. Two, two, three, zero, eight, starting position, and two, three, 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 eight is the end position. So between these two positions, inclusive of these two nucleotides, these are the five dash UTR. So you are annotating it. Then comes another mRNA. So you will have to join this contig comma, this contig comma, this comma. So these are instruction how to make an mRNA out of that particular genome sequence, right? And this mRNA corresponds to the gene P10 and you can also put so many nodes here. So in this case, the node is mRNA coordinate delineated by comparison to P10 cDNA. So there is another cDNA here, right? So there is a delineated coordination between these two clone DNAs. So that is what this node says. It could be anything. Well, to understand it, you should know about the, the genes, right, and how it, th these are expressed. It. So, slash gene is the, the product of that particular segment of cDNA and slash node. You can put any kind of node there. Then, continuing that again, another gene here, P10, right, exon, exon intron boundaries. You can put in the feature table. 
and then CDS, all this, uh, you know, uh, coding DNA sequences. So you can put some nodes as well here, and then you can also put pro product is P10. We know codon starts one. That's very important, right? Where to start translation? Then protein ID is this. This is the ID that is the accession dot version of the protein database of the GenBank. So you you have to do that all manually once you're submitting this sequence you generated a sequence of a particular gene you have to annotate everything manually to make it more, much more useful before submitting to the gen bank so for example you you know you are you are sequencing brca1 gene from a particular patient from Batinda civil hospital okay then you you come up with a sequence right then of course you don't know the brca1 protein so it is in another database protein database you have to get the accession number of that particular database and then you have to write here this is the accession number of my gene so that there is no confusion there right and uh, you know extra uh, database extra is that you're you're referring uh, huh? not reference but you're you are cross referring that X stand for cross referring this this entry is related to another entry in the same database that is what is what is GI 4240387 GI is GenBank identifier that is not the accession okay this is a GenBank identifier it could be a Resequencing of the same gene, same patient, you are resequencing to make sure that the sequence is right. So that they are putting as another GI sequencer. So these are cross referencing, right? You don't really have to care about it, but protein is very important. Then comes slash translation. So this is the amino acid sequence of that particular gene, right? Then it continues. Then you are writing all the exon, right? Different exons of the same gene. Then the end you are putting 3 dash UTR. So you know it's returned from 5 dash to 3 dash. That's why it's starting normally gene starting with 5 dash UTR, then the feature, then finally it's 3 dash UTR. Right? So for the sequence that is a, the main uh, part of the your uh, uh, you know the DNA sequence database entries or uh, flat files by convention when you see a DNA sequence written from left to right we say it's written from 5 dash to 3 dash end okay so that's the same way it's, it's being read right so this is the forward direction 5 dash to 3 dash is the forward and 3 dash to 5 dash is the reverse but it could be anything though, but this is just a con convention okay so standard abbreviations are used in the gen bank okay so the abbreviations we know a, C, G, T, we know all, right? Adenosine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Now, adenosine and guanine. So, guanine and adenosine are purine. So, if, if you are confused in this particular DNA sequence, electrophorogram, you are getting a dual peak. A is there and G is there. Have you seen a, a electrophorogram? You might have seen that, right? So normally, it's just one peak. And these peaks are nothing but graph. Electrophorograms are graph. And a peak corresponds to one particular amino acid, uh, particular nucleotide, right? So these are all color coded, right? So green or yellow or you know red, blue, okay? So all these are color coded. Now if you're saying two peaks, then it's a little bit confusing. So we don't know if it's a A color is also there and superimposed by G color. So it could be A or it could be G. So, you know, there is no convention, but normally if, if one peak is really high and another peak is very small, then we take the bigger peak and depends upon the quality of the nucleotide also, right? There are several factors, but if it's the same peak and same amplitude and superimposed A and G, then it's really a confusion. It could be A or it could be a G. Well, we know A and G are nothing but purines and we write the R instead of A or G, we write the R. Okay, so the other one C or T we know these are pyrimidine okay, or U also for the mRNA. The RNA it is not T but it's uracil, right? T, U, C we write the Y. So these are ambiguities, we know it, right? So these are Y there. So ketone group, amino group, 
the you know uh, accordingly you have to write that these are some standard thing right and G and C we know it is a triple bond right three hydrogen bond G between G and C so strong interaction G C S and W for A T U weak interaction and then uh, something which is not that it could be G it could be D it could be U or it could be C but not A so you write that B so why it is B here not A B comes after A is that clear? So here in this case, it could be G, C, A, not T, not U. Okay, so if if you say U, not U, V comes after U. That is why it's V written there. All this means there is an ambiguity there. There is a meaning. Okay, and again, it depends upon how good or how careful you are annotating your sequence. If you are very careless, then all ambiguities you are simply putting N. That is all acceptable, there is no issue. But to make it a lot more useful, you are being very particular. So you are looking at the uh, the peaks, and if these two peaks are purine or pyrimidine or weak interaction, strong interaction, or it could be you know four peaks you are getting except a peak. Okay? So it's impossible. Three peaks you will get because if you are in a DNA, there is no question about U. Okay. If you are working on RNA, there is no question about T. So, three peaks you are getting superimposed one after one, but you are not getting peak for A, then you have to write B there, right? And, uh, uh, you know, mass sequence or uh, any sequence, it is N. So, normally uh, you will see N very often because people, you know, they want to save time and they just want to publish the sequence very fast. And they don't have time to be more careful on writing all these conventions right and this a dash indicates a gap of indeterminate length so normally gaps you are putting after aligning these sequences so alignment sequence alignment uh, we will cover up later and after the alignment you put the gap so normally in the uh, you know the sequences we don't really put the gap there so it makes no sense at all right the, the you know gap means that discontinuous but dna sequence we know it's all continuous dna sequence right so this is an example of that and base count you can put base count on the top of it also so this is number of a's the same uh, gene which we uh, you know p10 gene right so these are number of a number of c number of g and number of t just a statistics there and this is a 1 to 60, 61 to 120, so, you know, stretch of 10 nucleotides, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So, in one line it is 60. So, this is the same format of FASTA that uh, GenBank is following. So, up to this, then, you know, so many sequences in between, then finally this is the first two, 2 lakh 18,281. Okay? So, this is what the sequence is. And submission tools, there are two kinds of submission. If you generate the sequence by yourself, normally you submit using Bankit. If you have uh, two or three sequences, no problem. You can submit through Bankit. It's very easy. It's HTML based okay? submission tool. So there is Bankit or Sequin. So Sequin is a program that you can use it to submit if you have so many sequences together you would like to submit it. So bank it or sequin. And it's these two are by provided by the gen bank, but you don't really have to use them. For example, for example, in my case, I'm using something called Genius. Okay, this is yet another standard application that I'm using it. So this kind of application, for example, Mega is another application. You can use that application to submit the sequences to Gen Bank.